Hi everyone, welcome to the stream. This is Accounting Nightmare. Welcome Tag, welcome Bruce, welcome Panicking, welcome Counting. Good to see you all. Wonder if I've bought cake? Not yet. <laughs> I will though, I need cake. Ah, uh, you're listening to the Case 3 VOD? Nice. Or resting your eyes from writing too much. Ah, what are you writing? Okay, we've just got to load up the program. Okay, been a few days, but we started case three. There we go, my badge was hidden. Hidden badge. Now we started case three, and uh, it's pretty interesting so far. Yeah, my badge is trying to hide. Car reviews for a video game. Ah, <laughs> interesting. Okay, beginning part two. So, this is a pretty cool case so far. We're playing as Gregory, Miles' father, so that's pretty cool. Hanging out with Raymond Shields, who's his assistant. Uh, we're trying to defend Jeffrey Master, regarded as the world's greatest pastry chef, and we're up against Von Karma because, of course, we are. Bloody Von Karma. Found out she is a huge um, fraud. <laughs> she has no idea what she's doing. She's here to steal secrets. Dane Gustavia. Don't know too much about him yet. Oh yeah, and Bad's the detective here. We get to hang out with Bad again. Don't know too much about her yet either. Isaac Dover, he's the victim. One of the uh, contestants in this big contest they're holding. The cooking contest. Alright, we're checking out the victim's room now. December 24, 9pm. Contest venue, Dover's room. This. What is the meaning of this? The desserts adorning the victim's room had vanished, had disappeared without a trace. Was this the true killer's doing? A body that was hidden inside of the dessert and a murder weapon that was moved. Further investigation would be required to arrive at the truth of this case. Ah, this is this is the very end of this that part. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> I figured that section seemed rather long. Alright, well we're officially in the middle of this case now. Oh yeah, and this whole case is Ray telling Miles a story. April 2nd, 10.15am, Zodiac Art Gallery, Fountain Patio. Oops, I guess I went on for a little too long there. Something like that happened? I have no idea. None of the case files I read went into such detail. Well, I doubt there would be anything in there that would be inconvenient to the prosecution. Especially with that Von Karma at the head. How did the investigation go from there? The desserts had disappeared from the victim's room, so the investigation hit a rough patch. Thanks to that, it took about a whole year before a verdict was handed down. Dang. One whole year? This was before the whole three-day pre-trial system was established. Trials didn't need to finish in the short amount of time that they do now. I see. Did they ever find out why the victim's dessert disappeared? Well, kinda. His dessert was like a candy ice sculpture, made from sherbet. Since it was made from ice, the general consensus was that it had melted. However, that might not quite be the case. What do you mean? This museum used to be Mr. Master's mansion, the stage of the IS-7 incident. And in this very place, they're exhibiting the Sherbet Salon from 18 years ago. The victim's dessert? Yep. 
Though it could be just a replica of the original. That's why Uncle Ray had to come today to check it out. And for your old man too. Now then, let's get a move on and check out the room. Okay, we're playing as uh, Miles today. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's over in the Winter Palace. Hmm. The Winter Palace should be... Huh? It's locked up. That's odd. They've already opened the museum. Mr. Shields, according to the pamphlet we received at the entrance, the Winter Palace is over here. Really? I could have sworn it was this one. Hmm, they changed the rooms. Hey UED, how are ya? Welcome. Japanifornia's justice system is so effed. Yup. The game knows what badge I'm wearing, it's sectioned. <laughs> yes. Hmm. Alright, let's scoot. We've got to confirm the truth of what happened 18 years ago. <laughs> it's uh, Ron Delight and, um, and his wife. What was her name? I've forgotten. That's cool. April 2nd, 10.20am, Zodiac Art Gallery, Winter Palace. Man, it's still as cold as ever. Uncle Ray is going to freeze solid. It seems the Winter Palace lives up to its name. It's like a freezer in here. With the light dimmed like this, it's almost as if the room itself is made of ice. I think the control panel for the room temperature is on the back wall. Miles, why don't you check what the temperature what temperature it's set at for me? Uncle Ray is going to give the curator a piece of his mind later. It's way too cold in here. Hmm, very well. But if you want to look around the room a bit, feel free to stay or freeze to your heart's content. I'll get the camera ready. I want to take some pictures of this place and show it to your old man. Understood. What? Hi. Well, how about this? I'll yell out, Master Mask is here! Yes, it's me! I'm Master Mask! Good, good. Wait, Ronnie, if you say that, you'll get arrested. Come on, if we don't plan properly, we won't be able to sell it. What are these two talking about? <laughs> hmm, they're up to no good. <laughs> I like those characters, they were great. <laughs> well, since we came all the way here, why don't you take a look around? Well, since this room is so cold, I thought I'd go to a warmer room. If you're that cold, why don't you borrow my clothes? And in exchange, I'll borrow your jacket. No thanks. Let's try enduring this for just a little longer. Desiree. Yes, that's it. Desiree. Tired from work but having a good dinner now that you're home? Oh, nice. A good dinner's pretty good. Okay. Well, we're miles at the moment, so what do we got? Got a badge. We can check out our badge. This badge's design is said to reflect the relentlessness and discipline of law enforcement. It comes from the authority vested in us, as strict protectors of the law and executors of sentences, much like harsh winter frosts and blazing summer days. To wear it is to identify oneself as a prosecutor, but I have no interest in doing so. Keeps it in his pocket. Each prosecutor's badge is engraved with the number of its owner on the back. Hm. Numbers. As if we're not human on the inside like everyone else. Oh. IS-7 incident file. 
Case Summary, Prosecutor, Manfred von Karma, Defense Attorney, Gregory Edgeworth. Isaac Dover's body was discovered inside a chocolate chest made by Jeffrey Master. The death was due to blunt trauma to the head given by a rock salt lamp. Blood was shed. The defendant, Mr. Master, was found guilty of murder and is now currently serving jail time. Hmm. Art gallery pamphlet. Okay, spring, summer, winter and autumn. Whoa. Okay, this is a lot of info. Associated temperatures, seasons and constellations. Summer, Sagittarius, Scorpio, Libra, Capricorn. Huh, interesting. Why are there four for autumn? Hmm. Oh, yeah, I haven't finished looking around yet. I'm uh, just trying to catch up with my... Oh, yeah, we've only got Raymond Shields here. Yeah. There's a boy with a school bag. Did he come to the art gallery by himself? Hmm. She even quit her job in order to run this museum. I don't really get it. Perhaps... One of his parents knows the curator. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. A giant block of ice is being displayed here. It appears to be quite heavy. No, the inside must be hollow. On the surface, there is an image of the stars and a written description. The Pleiades, also known as the Seven Sisters, a star cluster that comprises a part of Taurus. But for all these stars to be grouped together as a cluster, the ways of the ancient people must have been very imprecise. Oh, he knows something about constellations apparently. I do not. There are two sculptures displayed here. These sculptures are replicas of the desserts that vanished 18 years ago. Impressive, huh? These sculptures made of ice. Yes. My father never got to see these ice sculptures. And now, 18 years later, I'm standing before them. Miles, sorry to bother you while you're deep in thought. Could you turn this way a little? Hmm? Like this? Yes, yes, like that. He's taking a photo. <laughs> <laughs> but Mr. Shields, you're not... Say jeez! <laughs> Nice expression, Miles. Mr. Shields, please don't take pictures of me. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. I just wanted to make sure the camera works okay. That camera looks quite old. Yeah, well, that's because it's an old-fashioned camera. You know, an instant camera. It automatically develops the photos after shooting. Pretty cool, huh? Yes, I know. Though I've never used one. <laughs> You're quite the know-it-all. You really are the old man's son. Uh, could you move a bit? I want to take some more photos of the room. His face has taken on an unusually serious expression. He's probably thinking about the IS-7 incident. Man, I snapped a bunch and they're already developed, see? Not actually true, Miles. The precision with which ancient people were able to chart the stars is quite extraordinary. Particularly when you consider the primitive tools they had access to. Damn, that's really cool. He shoved them in my face before I could reply. <laughs> well, I have one more question for you, Mr. Know it all. Do you know what these two sculptures represent? They're sculptures of Taurus and Gemini from the Winter Constellations. Ooh, bingo! Not bad, Miles. That's probably why they call this room the Winter Palace. Uncle Ray is feeling generous today, so I'll give you a copy of this photo too. Ah, uh, th thanks. Hmm. 
Are these replicas of the constellation desserts that were made 18 years ago? Yeah, it looks like these two sculptures are also made out of sherbet. Uncle Ray has only seen the real sculptures in photos. But these sculptures look like the real deal. This was what you wanted to show me? Yeah, I think your old man would have wanted you to see it as well. I'm sorry, Uncle Ray didn't have the courage to come here or come here alone. Don't apologise. This was a good opportunity to learn about my father's case. That means a lot to me. So, you want me to take another commemorative photo? No thanks! <laughs> giant ox sculpture is glaring down at me. If someone glares at you, it's only polite to return the favour, was what I was taught. Its effectiveness depends on the timing, the situation, and the opponent. <laughs> glare, um, glare contests. To create something like this out of sherbet, even reproducing it would require considerable technique. The glass case seems to be lit up from the inside. If those stanchions weren't there, I could get a closer look. <laughs> this rock salt lamp is lighting up the constellation chart. I see. Gemini and Taurus are constellations that can be seen in the winter. Since this is the Winter Palace, perhaps that explains the winter constellations made of sherbet. According to the pamphlet, the other palaces are made of crystal. But for the Summer Palace, I think it'd be more fitting if it were made out of shaved ice. Well, no, that would make it exactly the same as this room. Hmm. <laughs> He's really going on about this. <laughs> so strange how Miles' closest friends still call him edgy, but only when his dad is involved do people start calling him Miles. Careful, edgy, you don't want to be charged for spreading paralysis with all your glares. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. How many people actually do call him edgy? I, I know Larry does, but who, who else calls him edgy? Hmm. Mr. Shields, I can't find the temperature control panel. Oh, right. They keep it where it's hard to find. Just one moment. Huh? It's locked. Makes sense. They wouldn't want the guests changing the temperature themselves. According to the pamphlet, the Winter Palace has a temperature of 27 degrees Fahrenheit. Brr! Now that is cold. Uncle Ray is going to freeze to death. Guess I'll need to find someone to share body heat with. Preferably a beautiful lady. <laughs> oh, are you trying to freeze me to death as well with those cold eyes? Of course not. Definitely not. Alrighty, now that I've got some pictures of this room, let's check out the other palaces. Might as well see them all, since we're already here. I suppose you're right. Ah! That yell just now. It came from the Fountain Patio. Let's go, Miles. Oh no. Is this going to turn into another whole incident? Oh god. Larry. Frickin' Larry. 10.30am, Fountain Patio. There's someone passed out on the floor. And that man there is. Larry, what are you doing here? No, I'm getting ahead of myself. What exactly happened here? Edgy! Uh, I saw something that no one should ever have to see. Again! Larry, calm down. Why is there someone passed out here? I, I didn't do anything. He just fell down all of a sudden. <sighs> Yeah, I, I said his name. Why did I say his name? <laughs> say the name of the beast and it will appear. <laughs> Even Kay calls him Mr. Edgeworth. Yeah. 
Yeah. This man, he couldn't be. Yeah, it's the it's the contestant from all those years ago. Excuse me, but what is the matter here? Oh, what what's she doing here? You can't raise such a ruckus in the museum, boys. Hmm? This scent is... Seems like he's still breathing, but this is a bad situation. Miles, it's not safe here. Get everyone out of here. Everyone, get away from that room right now. There's poison gas coming out from it. Oh, God. Oh. This took a turn. 10.42 a.m. I mean, it is a ga an art gallery, so I guess that makes sense that Larry's here. Hmm. <laughs> they, they have similar walks. <laughs> I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> Mr. Shields, how is the victim? It looks like he breathed in a little too much of that poison gas. He's still unconscious. According to the doctor in the ambulance, there are no external injuries or any other wounds. Thanks to our fortunate timing, we were able to save him before he was too far gone. But he's not out of the woods yet. He's currently being treated by a specialist in the infirmary. I see. Mr. Shields, is he an acquaintance of yours? Yeah, you could say that. He's Dane Gustavia. He was involved in the IS-7 incident. The pastry chef? So he was involved in the case 18 years ago. At least the other guy is doing alright. Is he a friend of yours, Miles? <laughs> yes, you could say that. It is fortunate you were not hurt, Larry. What's you could say that supposed to mean, Edgy? How could you treat a childhood friend like that? That's just cruel. And also, when I'm dressed like this, I'm called Loris da Downham, you know? Was it pronounced Downham? I forget. <laughs> Two cases for the price of one. Yeah, this is an interesting case. I have no idea what's going to happen next. So don't call me Larry, it's Loris. This man is Larry Butts. He's nothing but trouble, but he's been one of my friends since grade school. Some time ago, he awakened to the calling of art and assumed the alias Loris down him. But a butts by any other name would smell just as much. <laughs> Frickin' Larry. Really? You two are childhood friends? I better report that to your old man too. I'm sure it will bring him joy. He was always worried about you not being able to make friends. Good for you, Edgy. Aren't you glad to have a bosom buddy like me? My father was worried about something like that. But anyway, what are you doing in a place like this, Larry? Welcome to parenthood. Parents always worry about their kids. I do like Larry's theme. It's good. How many times do I have to tell you, Edgy? I'm Loris. What are you doing in a place like this? Yikes! Don't glare at me when you talk. So are you going to tell me? Isn't it obvious? I've come here to study art. I'm going to take Mandy on a date here, so I was just doing some scouting beforehand. Aren't you just using art as an excuse to go on a date? Not bad, Loris. Maybe you can introduce some pretty girls to me next time. Oh, now you're talking my language, dude. I think I'm getting a headache. By the way, Loris, did you notice anything strange when you found the victim? Nah, not really. Nothing that would make you say, I saw something that no one should ever have to see? Ah, oh, yeah, that. I was just surprised when I saw that old dude fall down out of nowhere like that. I didn't do anything this time for once. Is that anything to brag about? Visitors, we wish to deeply apologise for the disturbance. 
I am the curator of this museum. My name is Catherine Hall. She's also one of the people involved in the IS-7 incident. Hello there, Miss Kate. Monsieur Shields, thank you for your continued assistance. She was the woman we saw at the reception, so she's the curator here. We apologise for the inconvenience, especially since it's the opening day. No, no, you don't have to apologise for a thing, Miss Kate. Ah, I almost forgot. Let me introduce you to someone. This is Miles Edgeworth. He's Gregory Edgeworth's son. Oh, Monsieur Edgeworth's... <laughs> Alright, she's got a whole dance going. Oh, how wonderful I meet the sun after 18 years. It is an honour to meet you, Defense Attorney Miles Edgeworth. Wow, that was amazing. Yeah, sure. You still got that golden voice, Miss Kate. Actually, I'm a prosecutor. Oh, so you are a prosecutor. My most sincere apologies, Monsieur Edgeworth. This woman is very polite, but slightly odd. Uh, uh, Katie? Can I get your autograph right here, pretty please? Yes, if you so desire. Why do you want her autograph? Hey! Don't tell me! You don't know who she is! My my, you really don't keep up with the entertainment news, do you, Miles? What? What is this unbearable atmosphere? <laughs> hey, not Demon Slayer? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Slightly odd. Yeah, that describes just about everyone in the AA universe. <laughs> She's a superstar actress who's been in tons of musicals and movies. She's a great singer too. <laughs> Currently, I am the curator of this museum. I have already retired from the stage. I finished filming my role for my last movie a few days ago. My co-stars also said that they would come here once I opened the doors. And here you are, Monsieur Artiste. I return this to you. Thanks a bunch, Katie. I'll treasure it for the rest of my life. Well, well. Looks like me and Loris share the same interests. So I gathered. Larry, you said you're here to study art. Why don't you practice drawing as well? Since you're here at Miss Hall's Art Museum. Oh, it would be an honour to have Monsieur Artiste sketch our exhibits. Oh, I guess even you have some good ideas every now and then, Edgy. I'll do a bit of sketching for Katie here. <laughs> what an amusing person. Forgive the disturbance. Incidentally, who was the woman that was with you earlier? That was Madame Delicia Scones. She is currently assisting in the treatment of Monsieur Gustavia in the infirmary. Even though I said infirmary, since this is an art museum now, it is only provisional. As I am the only staff member working here, I cannot take a leave of my duties for too long. Delicious scones. I believe we have heard that name before, Mr. Shields. Yep. Looks like the whole gang from the IS-7 incident is here. Well, I doubt that's a coincidence. Monsieur Shields, Monsieur Edgeworth, would you care for some hot tea? Oh, Miss Kate's tea. That takes me back. Yes, if you please. Can't say no to tea. Now, I must take my leave. I must explain the situation to the other visitors. Alright, thanks for everything. This smells like Ceylon tea. I should drink it before it cools. How do we know the tea isn't poisoned? <laughs> it's something that was just poison gas for some reason earlier.
too. This Ceylon tea is of very high quality. And this aroma of citrus does wonders for your concentration, right? <laughs> your old man said the exact same thing 18 years ago. But the sources back then were chilled. Today they're warm. Hmm. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Don't you think this current situation is rather unusual? You mean how everyone involved in the case 18 years ago has gathered at this museum? Yes. I would like to be in charge of this case, if at all possible. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, sir, are you okay? Mr. Edgeworth, Mr. Shields! I came here as fast as I could when I heard that you were done in by the poison gas. Oh, my sweet honey Kay. How about a hug after being part of it so long? Ray, please stop being a creep. I like you, but you need to stop being a creep. No. Jeez, so you're perfectly fine? I can't believe you made us worry so much. Detective Gumshoe, what is the meaning of bringing Kay here? Uh, I'm sorry, sir. I knew the gas was dangerous, so I tried to stop her. But no matter how much I ran and ran and ran and ran, I couldn't gain any ground. <laughs> when it comes to running away, no one is faster than the Yatagadasu. But you weren't running away from here. You weren't running away from here. Mr. Edgeworth, I'm all set, sir. I'll start investigating the crime scene. Since there might still be traces of gas in the room, I'll have to ask everyone to wait here. Very well. I'm counting on you. Good luck in there, Flatfoot. Wow. Gummy's so cool. He's just like a detective. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> like to know where he got his obsession with hugging from. Especially given how shy and awkward he was as a kid. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. He stopped eating uh, notes as well, thankfully. Very polite, but slightly odd sums up half the cast of Ace Attorney. Very rude, but slightly odd sums up the other half. <laughs> yes. But that's what he is. Yes, Edgeworth here. Mr. Edgeworth! It looks like the poison gas has dissipated, sir. Detective, calmly explain the state of the Autumn Palace. Yes, sir. I'll start with the exhibits. On the left, there's a statue with two people. Hmm. <clears throat> and on the right, there's a statue of an animal with two horns. A statue of two people and a statue of an animal with horns? Isn't that the exact same thing I saw in the Winter Palace just a while ago? Also, the room is wet with water thanks to the sprinkler system. That also prevented the gas from harming anyone else. The sprinkler system. Was there a fire in the room? There are no signs of a fire, and the fire alarm hasn't gone off either, sir. The sprinklers in this museum are the kind that detects both smoke and fire. If it detects smoke, it will send an alert to the security room. I think the poison gas might have set off the alarm in the security room, sir. Was there anyone in the security room at the time? The only one working here is a curator, Miss Catherine Hall, sir. She has been in the reception booth opposite the security room ever since the museum opened. Who run? Who, who owns this museum? Get some more staff members, you frickin' fricker. Did Miss Hall turn on the sprinklers? The sprinkler system can only be operated manually from the security room, sir. If it had been automatic, it would have sprayed water all over the exhibits. Since the system is manual, the situation can be examined, and the exhibits moved if need be. I guess there would be more priority over the exhibits than the building. Only at a museum. Brr, but it's way too cold in this room, sir. Isn't this supposed to be the Autumn Palace? 
It feels more like the dead of winter in here. The Autumn Palace is cold. I checked the thermostat earlier, and it was set to 27 degrees Fahrenheit. I couldn't believe it. What was it supposed to be set to? It's supposed to be set to 64 degrees Fahrenheit, 18 degrees C. Hmm. Security room, oh no, you thought we were going to get old bag. <laughs> no, no, don't say her name. I already said Larry's name and made him show up. <laughs> Why would the Autumn Palace be set to the same temperature as the Winter Palace? That's about all I know for now, sir. If I figure out anything else, I'll give you another call. I see. I'm counting on you, detective. 11.15 AM. The horror, <laughs> yeah. What did Gummy say? He said it feels more like winter in the Autumn Palace. Huh? I don't get it. I haven't been able to enter the room personally, but it should be possible to look inside after the police have finished investigating. Hmm, I'd like to know what it's like in there myself. Isn't there anyone else who knows about the incident? Ah, there is someone. Miles' friend, right? Friend? Though he's such a nuisance, we have no choice but to listen to what he has to say for now. Wait, you mean... Oh, you're here too, Kay. You're looking as cute as ever. No, Larry. <laughs> Long time no see. It's Larry, isn't it? Kay, right now my name is Loris. I'm an artist, that's why. Ah, so that's your pen name. Loris, the artist formerly known as Larry. Wow, you really are a good girl, Kay. Nothing like edgy here. <laughs> Larry, I have many things I need to ask you. What's this? Don't tell me you suspect me again. You're gonna say because I was first on the scene. I must be the culprit, aren't you? I never said anything like that. I only want you to tell me what you saw. You said you saw something that no one should ever have to see, did you not? No, he's not going to tell us the truth, is he? Oh, Larry always does this. <laughs> but now I'm saying I didn't see nothing, and I didn't do nothing. Probably. <laughs> oh my, he didn't seem so confident at the end there. There are somewhat troublesome circumstances surrounding this man. <laughs> the saying, when something smells, it's usually the butts, still holds true. 26 years on. One could say his tendency to attract trouble is legendary. It seems he's done something troublesome without even realising it himself. I'll just have to try and extract the truth from him. Psycho lock in three, two, yes. Good night, Roos. Thanks for hanging out. Not just to mention, my goal is to expose whatever Larry is hiding. However, I didn't see nothing, I didn't do nothing. Larry is an extremely restless and troublesome man. Until he calls down, I'll just wait and see. First, I'll ask him about his goal. Oh, uh, hi. Cat just scared me. Hello, sweetie. I'm in the chest dimension, you can't just scare me like that. This isn't something I can't handle. I'll finish this quickly. Why did you come here? What was your purpose for coming to the art gallery? What? What are you saying that I don't- Are you saying that I don't belong in an art gallery? Wait and see. 
Hey, if you're not going to talk, hug that post so I can paint your portrait. And then I'll scribble all over the portrait I drew of you. <laughs> what? <laughs> your paintings are all scribbles. Uh, nah. Wait and see. I was just joking. I would never scribble over my paintings, of course. They're works of art, after all. I don't think any of your works would qualify as art. Don't look down on me. There are people who recognise my skills as an artist. <laughs> Wait and see. Do I play the patient game with Larry? Yeah, the, the music here is really good. I agree. Mandy is my girlfriend, but it's really my paintings she fell in love with. That's why I'll sketch anything my girlfriend likes. Then why are you here on your own today? So what? Can't a guy with a girlfriend spend some time alone? Mandy said she's a Gemini. I thought she'd be happy if I showed her a sketch of it on our next date. Do you really have that much confidence in the sketch? Well, I'm not so confident about this one. But I thought she would be happy if I did a sketch of her astro astrological sign. Hmm, I see. That's just like you. To impress Mandy, you came here to see the Gemini sculpture, didn't you? Wh what? How'd you find out? Because you just unknowingly told me everything. Well, well then, I'm not saying another word from now on. It's finally decided to remain silent. In that case, I'll be more relentless in my questioning. I'll try to find out what he was doing here at the art gallery. I'll expose his true motives. This shouldn't take long. You... Just what did you do in this art gallery? What's with that glare? I, I don't really remember anything. I didn't have a pamphlet, so I just loitered around and around the fountain patio. You forgot to get a pamphlet. Don't they give you a pamphlet at the reception booth after you pay the admission fee? Huh? Oh, is that right? So, the admission wasn't free, huh? <laughs> Did he sneak his way in? Oh my god. Who the heck is Mandy? His latest girlfriend. <laughs> Don't tell me you sneaked in here without paying. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to do anything bad. I it's just... There was no one at the reception booth. That's why I thought you could come in here for free. Miss Hall wasn't at the reception booth. Yeah, it didn't look like there was anyone on, on the other side of the desk. Come to think of it, Gumshoe did say something about that. Miss Hall was busy activating the sprinklers of the security room. Because of the incident, she had to leave the reception booth. Poor Katie. She went to all that trouble to open up the place. And now, the art gallery's star attraction, the Winter Palace, is completely ruined. You're certainly well informed about the Winter Palace, as someone without a pamphlet. The Winter Palace is where your goal, the Gemini Sculpture, is located. You had your sights set on the Winter Palace from the beginning, didn't you? What? H how'd you find me out again? That's right. My goal was to see the Gemini Sculpture. From the very beginning, the Winter Palace was the very reason I came here. He confessed quite easily. You can never tell anything with this man. Next, I'll ask for further information regarding the Winter Palace. He may still have some fight left in him. I'll watch his reactions and extract the information I need. <laughs> I have no more use for you. <laughs> mm. 
Middle part one. I have no more use for you. Leave now. Huh? Really? You're actually letting me go? Well, I need to go meet Mandy anyway. W wait, that was a mistake. Benji, you need to take responsibility for what you say. <laughs> I'm being lectured by him. Please, I'd like to ask you a few more questions. Fine, but you'll have to treat me to dinner. Ugh. I need to be careful not to make careless statements. <laughs> Larry, did you also enter the Winter Palace? W what's with that look of distrust? Sure, I tried going in, but... You tried to go in, but you weren't actually able to, right? Yeah, that's about right. I wanted to go in, but... Then that old geezer collapsed. I was a little freaked out. So you couldn't get in because the victim of the poison gas collapsed? Yeah, he fell right out of the Winter Palace. Hmm? I'm sure the victim emerged from the Autumn Palace. If it weren't for that poison gas incident, I'd be in there sketching the Gemini sculpture right now. Larry must have mistaken the Autumn Palace for the Winter Palace. That aside, it seems his goal was to sketch the sculpture. Heh, <laughs> this should be a useful clue. I thought we already ascertained that. <laughs> Oh well. Extracts Yamato from Larry. <laughs> Larry, did you see anything in the Winter Palace? You're still hung up on that? Didn't I say that I didn't see anything? I started to think that it wasn't such a good idea to come to the art gallery. I needed to leave soon to meet with my girlfriend. Perhaps I should try using that clue. You came here to sketch the sculpture for your girlfriend, did you not? I don't think you would give up that easily. Even after the victim collapsed, you could still see inside the room from the outside, right? W well, I may have gotten a tidy glimpse, but... There's no evidence that I saw something scary in there, right? Saw something scary. Hmm. I'll go with you saw something scary. Yeah. My, my. I'm disappointed it turned out to be this simple. Larry, you saw something scary at the crime scene, didn't you? <laughs> Ooh, uh... Edgy, you, can you read my mind? In that case, there's no point in keeping any more secrets from you. You just told me everything of your own accord. That was a complete waste of time, but... Finally, it's checkmate. Woohoo! I had my eyes fixed on the Gemini sculpture. Yeah, I don't bother doing the uh, incorrect answers in logic chess because they all they're all mostly the same. Objection! You've mentioned the Gemini sculpture many times now, but I don't believe the sculpture you saw was the Gemini one. W what? Was it a mirage then? Larry mistakenly thought he saw the Winter Palace. This piece of evidence shows what Larry really saw. Uh, my badge. Obviously. This piece of evidence shows what you really saw. You know, you really shouldn't put that much faith in your sense of aesthetics. If you'd like, I could teach you a thing or two about art. No, it's fine. So it's not this piece of evidence. 
Hmm, what he really saw. <gasps> cat alarm's going off. Meow, says the cat. Hello, cat. Hello. Is it your dinner time? Hmm? Are you sure you're hungry? Are you sure? I'm not convinced that you're hungry. Oh, so cute. Scratch your little chin. All right, I'm going to go feed this cat. Over here, sweetie. All right, I'll go feed here. I'll be away maybe 10 minutes. I need to get some more water too. So I'll give you all some music. This is a good place to stop because we're already at the uh, title screen. <laughs> okay. I shall be back in just a little bit. I'll see you then. Okay, I'm back. I was gone way longer than I wanted to be. Sorry about that. But I'm back. Something happened. All good now, though. Okay. Ah, welcome back. Counting. What did you miss? Um, nothing if you uh, if you've been gone this whole time too, because I just came back too. <laughs> Thanks, Tag. Okay, yes, we we just finished logic chess with Larry, and he apparently saw something scary. So we're gonna find out what that was. Maybe. <laughs> Who knows when he will tell the truth. The, the only consistent thing about Larry is he doesn't tell the truth right away. <laughs> That's right, we're trying to figure out what he saw instead of the uh, Winter Palace. Not the Gemini sculpture from the Winter Palace. I must have evidence that proves that. Well, we can show the art gallery to show that he wasn't going into the Winter Palace. He was going in the Autumn Palace. I mean, it has to be the... Take a look at this pamphlet. In the Autumn Palace... The Pisces, Capricorn, Aries, and Aquarius sculptures are displayed. Incidentally, I can confirm that the Gemini sculpture is located in the Winter Palace. Therefore, the sculpture you saw could not have been the Gemini one. But we've already established that it sounds like... I, I, I guess... I guess Edgeworth hasn't seen in there yet. Oh, well. I knew it. Hmm. I expected him to be a bit more shocked at the news. I thought it was kind of strange. I know I saw a single goddess. And that transformation was no mirage. Transformation, you say? Oh, you're curious too, Edgy? Well, nothing for it. Guess I'll have to show you. Show me? What exactly? I drew a picture of the very scene I saw back then. Uh-oh. <laughs> ah, no worries, Tag. But I really can't believe what I drew. Picture? What picture? This one, right here. Wh what? What is this disturbing picture? Is that sculpture weeping tears of blood? Loris! This picture is scary! 
Okay, it scared me too. This Gemini sculpture suddenly transformed into a goddess right before my eyes. I couldn't help but scream. So the victim collapsing wasn't what surprised him. What do you mean when you say transformed? I don't really understand it myself. The lower half of its body just turned into a fish. Why did he hide this? Why don't he just tell us right away? Because <laughs> he's Larry. <laughs> a fish goddess? That would be the Pisces sculpture, wouldn't it? In mythology, Pisces represents the fish that a goddess and her son transform into. Really? So Pisces isn't just a couple of ordinary fish? Edgy, you don't think that sculpture is cursed, do you? Those tears of blood turned this Gemini sculpture into a fish. Preposterous. You simply mistook the Pisces sculpture for the Gemini one. Hmm. Oh, you put the sketch in your organizer? <laughs> Even a sketch like this can be used as scrap paper after all. <laughs> could you? But it's strange. Why did only the lower half of the sculpture transform? Uncle Ray's a bit curious about what went on in the Autumn Palace. Indeed. I wonder if someone tampered with the Pisces sculpture. Yes, Edgeworth here. Mr. Edgeworth, we've finished searching the room. The poison gas isn't a threat anymore, so you can enter the crime scene. Right. Good work, detective. It seems we can enter the Autumn Palace now. Nice timing, Mr. Detective. Let's go right now. I want to see the Pisces sculpture. If Kay is going, I'm going too. I was planning on bringing him along anyway. Right then, let's proceed to the Autumn Palace. So this is the Autumn Palace. It certainly does resemble the Winter Palace. I've been waiting, sir. Huh? Aren't you... that Harry Butts guy? Wrong! I'm Loris Downham. Never mind that, Detective. Your report, if you please. Roger that, sir. Uh... We discovered a used gas burner during our investigation. The nozzle was still warm when we found it, so it may be related to the incident. Hmm. Was it used to heat something? This is an, a very... I've, I've no idea what happened, but I'm very curious. <laughs> this is a very interesting case. Was that ladder always there on the ground? It was probably used by the person who set off the poison gas. The poison gas was released when someone lifted the lid off that glass case, sir. Hmm? The Pisces sculpture. Huh? Seems like you know about it, sir. Well then, do you know what the sculpture next to it is? Since we're in the Autumn Palace, it will probably be the Capricorn sculpture. As expected of Mr. Edgeworth. I thought it was Taurus myself. I was thrown off as it was covered by this weird cloth. Hmm. The fluorescent cloth! I wonder what it's doing here. Evidence from the IS-7 incident. No matter what it is or how it got here. The sculptures in this room are all covered with this fluorescent cloth. And because they're hidden, it makes me want to see them even more. Let's take a look. I'll just get this cloth off. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Wow, they're beautiful. You don't think the transformation that Larry saw 
was, in fact, the moment the cloth wrapped around the lower half. The cloth wrapped around the lower half of Pisces fell. See, Edgy! It wasn't a mirage or a mistake after all. <sighs> hey, Mars. There sure is something strange about this room. It looks exactly the same as the Winter Palace we were in just a moment ago. Yes, I agree. Perhaps the sculptures were hidden to make it look like the Winter Palace. If you wrap the cloth around the lower half of the Pisces sculpture, it looks like Gemini. Capricorn is a half fish too. Hide the lower half and it resembles Taurus. The remaining two, which couldn't be altered with trickery, were covered up. This is very strange. Why would anyone do this? Hmm. The Autumn Palace was made to look like the Winter Palace. So it seems, Mr. Shields. It looks like we'll need to conduct an investigation of the Autumn Palace too. Uh -oh. oh god. Mr. DeBest and Judge Courtney. Hey, hey, hey! You guys again! This is a problem. You see, this is my crime scene. Mr. Edgeworth. It seems my power is insufficient. If you're here, then it would appear that you still haven't understood my warnings. Yeah. Furthermore, you know full well your reckless actions will cause trouble for that detective. In the name of the Goddess of Law, I must pass judgement. You've got it all wrong, pal. I was the one who asked Mr. Edgeworth to investigate. Really? Well then, Flatfoot, I'll have to do that. That? Yeah, that. Uh, right, cut your salary. Looking forward to your next payday? I've always wanted to say that. Oh, you're the last person I want cutting my salary, pal. Hold it to best. I am only cooperating with the police as a witness to this incident. Detective Gumshoe is not to blame. Hmm, so that's how it is. Well then, should I be raising his salary? No, that's not what I meant. Please raise his salary! But it would be really nice to get my salary raised. Your mercy is deeply moving, Sebastian. But past transgressions must lead to future judgement. Prosecutor Edgeworth and all in his company depart at once from this holy site. But, but that's... we only just got here. The one given the Goddess of Law's blessing for this incident was Sebastian. In other words, Mr. De Best is the prosecutor in charge of this case. That's right, Mr. Edgeworth. Your opening performance is over. Besides, I've already got my eyes set on the culprit. What? Who, pal? Well, naturally. That artist. Oh, God. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no. The odd couple returns. <laughs> yeah, Ray, Ray is quite sharp. With how often Gumshoe's salary gets cut, he must owe the department any day, every payday now. Aww. Me? Hey, what's going on, Edgy? Don't ask me. I can't understand his reasoning. Ugh. If you can't understand how the best prosecutor thinks, it simply shows how inculpable you are. It seems he doesn't know what inculpable even means. I don't either. <laughs> That's right, Sebastian. Prosecutor Edgeworth is quite incapable. Um, yes. He's incapable. She just nonchalantly corrected him. Don't underestimate my intelligence gathering skills. I just came from the infirmary and asked the doctor there about the cause of the poison gas. And what was the cause? Uh, some normal substance. What was its name again? H hold on a second. I'll call the doctor to make sure. Didn't write it down or anything? <laughs> Since Sebastian is on the phone, I'll answer for him. 
In that case, why didn't you tell us before he called? The poison gas was caused by the mixing of two different types of chemicals. Their names are Normalium and Fatalium. Hmm. So, what are those chemicals exactly? Normalium is a red liquid that's commonly used in everyday products. It can be found in paint and detergent, among other things, but it is not toxic by itself. So, you're saying that it's a substance readily available to anyone? Yes, but Fatalium, on the other hand, is not so easy to obtain. These names, these aren't real chemicals, are they? <laughs> Hey, King Broly, how are ya? The best's hair looks like a coat hanger. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> Suspected of murder most award, Larry or Meyer. Mmm. That's a difficult uh, contest. Inculpable is the opposite of culpable. Cannot be culpable. Ah, okay. Thanks, counting. Its name sure sounds dangerous. What's it used for? It is the active ingredient of a white pesticide known as Megatoxin X. <laughs> as opposed to Cold Killer X. Battalion itself has a deep white colour, but it's not readily sold in stores. It's nearly impossible to obtain domestically. Right now, we are looking into how this chemical was obtained. How the hell would Larry have gotten hold of that? Okay, I've finally found out the names of those chemicals. Judge Courtney has already told us. We don't need to hear it again. Oh? Fine then, I'll cut to the chase. You know that normalium from the poison gas is also used in paint, right? Today, out of everyone who visited the art gallery, the only one carrying paint was that artist. He's, he's terrible. He's just, he's trash at his job. Fire him, please. <laughs> y you're treating me as the culprit just because of that? I object to the red paint on the palette you're carrying. Hey, Edgy, don't you think this prosecutor is kind of an idiot? Indeed. Although I've only known him for a short time, his logic is always absurd. Hey, don't ignore me. It's all right, Sebastian. They're only doing it because they're afraid of you. Ugh. I don't like her. <laughs> like the first star to appear at night. Show us reasoning that shines the best. The first star shines best. Not bad. Hey, you guys better listen up too. Mr. The Best's shining logic. <laughs> oh, jeez. One could say he's scum. Yeah, I haven't set up my scum, but I forgot about setting up sound effects. Ah, well. Even Larry looks down on Sebastian. How low can you go? <laughs> yes. Uh. So that, uh, that, what was her name? De Delicia? She was a pharmacist, wasn't she? And, and she had, she had some chemicals. Hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why she's just, well, yeah, why she's enabling him. That's, I'm really confused and concerned about what her motives are. <clears throat> that artist was the first to discover the victim, so naturally he's the best suspect. The poison gas was caused by Nemalium, a chemical found in paint, right? As he was carrying paint near the victim, he would have had the best chance. The paint, along with being the first witness, that pretty much proves he's the culprit. So, what do you think, Justine? We cannot ignore the possibility. Well then, Mr. Artist, please tell us the truth. Did you leave red paint at the crime scene? Or else, 
Did you cause the poison gas to go off? The only thing I leave behind is my bond of love with you. Oh, <laughs> that's not going to work, Larry. Please watch what you say. My gavel is already prepared to declare you guilty. Objection! Please pay no heed to this man's statements. Objection! Hey, hey, you guys. Ignoring my reasoning just because it's flawless won't do you any good. Mr. Edgeworth, if you've already admitted defeat, you should take your leave. Hm. Even though I don't really have time to deal with your ridiculous reasoning. That artist was the first to discover the victim, so naturally he's the best suspect. He's giving you the best chance of having an aneurysm. <laughs> Indeed, at first glance, this man seems suspicious. However... At first glance? Ugh, what's with that first all of a sudden? You! Are you trying to steal my spot as the star that shines best? Huh? Would that make me the best artist? Larry, don't make this any more confusing than it already is. Mr. The Best, continue your reasoning now. Oh, I changed my badge as well. We're back to Prosecutor Badge. The poison gas was called was caused by nemalium, a chemical found in paint, right? Yes. Apparently normalium is used in many everyday products. Right, so the red paint is definitely suspicious. But it's also used in things other than paint, right? Hmm, I guess you have a point. What do you think, Justine? That's right. Nemalion is also used in detergent, for example. In other words, it might not have been paint that caused the gas. Th that's not true! Let me finish my reasoning! The green flashing argument on the top left of the screen should come with quotation marks when it's Sebastian. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> It, it would be like, that would be what Raymond would do, since he does the air quotes. Yeah, that, that would be great. As he was carrying paint near the victim, he would have had the best chance. Even if paint is the cause of the poison gas, that does not mean he is guilty. Haha, <laughs> well then, if the paint is not the cause, that doesn't mean he's innocent either. Now he's just trying to sound clever. Mimicking what Mr. Edgeworth says won't make you look cool at all. Kay, please don't make my statements look bad. Now then, it's about time to wrap up my shining logic. The paint, along with being the first witness, that pretty much proves he's the culprit. It's a good emote, UED. The trash. <laughs> Good. Do you truly claim that Larry is the culprit based on just that? Huh? You got a problem with that? If you have a problem, then present evidence. Mr. Edgeworth? It looks like he really wants you to do that. Indeed. Then I will do as he wishes and present evidence. It seems he doesn't pay much attention to what other people are saying. There is a clear contradiction in Mr. DeBest's logic. Why do you even bother making the phone call? I'll finish this quickly. This is a waste of time. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. I don't know if we'll have any new dialogue here since we've uh, we've argued with him before. I'll just make sure though. Check out my bag. Mr. De Best, what do you think about this piece of evidence? Why are you asking for my opinion? Don't you see? This evidence contradicts your testimony. What? I don't believe this evidence has that kind of meaning. Yeah, I think we've seen this before. Yeah, we've definitely seen that before. Alright. So 
So, uh, I wonder which statement that it wants. This one? Yeah, probably this one. Like, how did he get hold of the other chemical? That's the actually important one here. Not the normalium. Mr. the Best, your logic is more akin to a shooting star to a shooting star than a shining star. <laughs> it shines the best like a shooting star, right? It may shine brightly for a brief moment, but then it burns itself out. The poison gas originated from inside the glass case of the Pisces sculpture. Exactly. So that's where the artist set off the gas, right? He used the normalium in his red paint. As your senior, let me give you one piece of advice. Listen to the explanations of others. The poison gas was caused by mixing both normalium and fatalium together. The normalium contained in the red paint is not enough by itself. Really? But I thought I heard that normalium caused the fatality. <laughs> Don't tell me you just misheard the forensic report. D darn it! By the time Larry discovered the victim, the room was already filled with poison gas. It is time for you to realise how incapable you really are. Hey! What do you mean by incapable? You tried to use that word earlier, and you still don't know what it means. He means to say, you are lacking in ability. Incidentally, incapable has a completely different meaning. <laughs> well, he's really going off on him this time. <laughs> I get it! You're making fun of me again, aren't you? I am merely saying you were incapable in your investigation. Before you insult Sebastian, I still have some doubts about your own statement. What kind of doubts? For all we know, Mr. Artis could simply have entered the Autumn Palace at an earlier time. That's... Moreover, do you have evidence that the red paint is unrelated to the case? The most important thing now is not the red paint. The red normalium and the white fatalium. Exactly how were these two substances mixed? I believe that is our main concern. Naturally. It was Sebastian's job to investigate that. Were it not for your interference, we would have found that out by now. I never intended to interfere. On the contrary, I'd like to cooperate. Don't tell me you're going to say you know the cause of the poison gas. How the poison gas started? I have something that may shed some light on this matter. It's my save file. My evidence. It's called air. It is coming from Mr. De Best. It's hot and awful. <laughs> Sebastian, do not fall for his bluff. Come now, it's fine, really. Let's hear what he's come up with. If you say so, Sebastian. Come on, come on, show us. How did the poison gas start? Started with my badge. Can you see this piece of evidence? It has traces of the poison gas's origin. <laughs> Sebastian. Don't get too close to Mr. Edgeworth. His foolish logic will make you dizzy. I find it poisonous and even guilty. <laughs> he backed away. He actually backed off. <laughs> Don't give up, Mr. Edgeworth. Keep using your poison tongue like you always do. I must have evidence that shows how the Nomalium and Fatalium were mixed. Red Nomalium and White Fatalium were mixed, huh? <laughs> that was... that was really good. Courtney enables the best. The best enables Edgy's smug meter. Yes. Gonna have something to do with this gas burner. Take 
Oh. It's not the gas burner. Reload. Get the feeling these two might be worse for defendants than Von Karma. <laughs> oh. Yeah, they're so terrible at... yeah. I, I, I have no faith that the best would get any case correct on his own. I feel like he needs Edgeworth to follow him around full time and fix his mistakes. Yeah. Well, I don't have any options. Just gonna show that again. Uh, I guess we're gonna show you the sketch. Surely you're not saying that this was the cause of poison gas. <laughs> it seems even you have noticed it. Duh! It really stands out. Those red tears that Larry saw were undoubtedly Normalian. Huh? Wait a second. If those were chemicals, does that mean a ghost set off the poison gas? I don't have time to play along with him. The red tears of Normalium could not have triggered the poison gas by itself. That red liquid was mixed inside the case to create the poison gas. What? Just where do you see evidence that the chemicals were mixed? That can also be seen in this sketch. A, com a competent defense attorney would just tear the best apart in court unless Courtney was the actual judge of the case. Yeah. Yeah, Co I would assume Courtney would be the judge because she's always hanging out with him. Here is the evidence. Show evidence that the two chemicals were mixed. Eh. I would say the pink smudge because it's not red anymore. What if it's this random corner? The proof is right here. It seems the truth has been made as clear as black and white. You really are just a bluffing fool! <laughs> wow. <laughs> to be called that by Mr. The Best of all people. As clear as black and white, it's not that simple. If you mixed white and red, naturally their colour should change. Getting owned by the best like that, or oh, Edgy's gonna have bad bad nightmares about that. A pink liquid can be seen flowing out from under the case of the Pisces sculpture. This is proof that the two chemicals were mixed. Oh, hold on a second. I still don't get it. How does this show that Normalium and Fatalium were mixed? Since we have a self-proclaimed artist here, I'll let him explain. Larry, you fancy yourself an artist, so you should know about mixing paint, right? What do you add to red to make pink? Don't take me for a fool, Edgy! I'll have you know I graduated from middle school! You add white and red to make pink, it's common knowledge! Well, technically there's rose pink, baby pink, and several others. <laughs> That's enough. Now do you understand, Mr. DeBest? Oh, that's how it is. By mixing red nemalium and white fatalium. You get a pink liquid. Yes, exactly. Took him long enough. Hmm, I see. It looks like Mr. DeBest finally gets it. Prosecutor Edgeworth, you have merely presented one possibility. Do we really know if the colour was the result of the two chemicals mixed together? Furthermore, this sketch was drawn by the suspect. I cannot put much faith into it. I just painted what I saw. How could that be a lie? Mr. Artist, I did not permit you to speak. Oh, 
So cold. But that's part of her charm. Of course, I intend to bring the truth to light immediately. It would not be wise to jeopardize your position even further. Aren't you going to answer my question from before? How do you know that Mr. Artis did not enter the Autumn Palace? If you cannot prove this, there is no room for you to argue any further. Hey, couldn't we find that out if we talked to the victim, pal? The victim, Dane Gustavia, remained unconscious and in critical condition. Aw, oh, that's right. Well then, Sebastian will be investigating the crime scene now. All of you, please vacate the premises. If you were to take a stand in court, you'd cause a lot of trouble for the presiding judge. <laughs> Is there something you would like to say, Mr. Artist? we find that out if we talk to the victim. That's weird to hear in an AA game. Yes, <laughs> it really is. Hold your horses, Miss Cole Beauty. My name is Justine Courtney. Please don't address me by such a strange title. Oh, you finally told me your name. Pleased to meet you, Justy. I'm Loris Downham, but you can call me Loris. Mr. Artist, please get to the point. I just remembered something I haven't had a chance to say yet. When I first got to this room, it was locked, so I couldn't go in. But then, that old dude just suddenly fell through the door. It would appear that the palace rooms can be locked from the inside. That's right, it was locked when we first got it, too. But, just because you say it was so, doesn't mean the door was locked. Without proof, your statement holds no value. Well, why not let Uncle Ray prove it for you? What? After all, we can confirm the room was locked too. Right, Miles? Yes, I remember as well. Hmm, the Winter Palace should be... Huh? It's locked up. That's odd. They've already opened the museum. Until the gas outbreak, no one could have entered this room. Perhaps the suspect entered the room with the victim during the gas outbreak. As you can see, this man did not inhale any of the gas. If you examine his belongings, you'll find he wasn't carrying a gas mask either. Is that so? Well then, I have no choice but to agree. Hmm? That was easier than I expected. Anyway, I presume this clears up any suspicion surrounding Larry? It seems Mr. DeBest's logic was off once again. <laughs> Not exactly. I just didn't have enough information, that's all. Therefore, my reasoning was just before its time. He sure is a grand way of saying that things didn't work out for him. In that case, there is one more suspect who is yet to take the stand. Mr. Artist, you are free to go. Oh, yeah. Huh? But I wanted to talk to you a little more, Justy. Overruled. Your cold demeanor leaves me mesmerized all the more. This other suspect is... A pharmacist by the name of Delicia Scones. Ah, oh wow, okay. She's actually on the right track, I think. It would have been difficult for this artist to obtain the Fatalium from Megatoxin X. But a pharmacist may have knowledge of how to do that. <laughs> she knew that that woman was a pharmacist and she didn't suspect her first? Starting to think Justine's hairstyle of blocking one eye is representative of her seeing only what she wants to see, not the whole picture. Ah, that's a, that's a good observation. 
the best will now be contaminating and utterly destroying all evidence of the crime scene now. Yes. <laughs> the court will now take a 10 minute recess. Sebastian, it would be best if we brought her in quickly. Best if we brought her in quickly? <laughs> Sounds good. Leave it to me. Hey, Flatfoot, keep up the investigation. Oh, got it. Don't tell me. Judge Courtney suspected her from the very beginning. So Mr. DeBeth's logic wasn't any help at all. Judge Courtney, just what is she thinking? Hmm, okay. To be continued. That was a very sudden to be continued, wasn't it? Okay. What is the time? Yeah, I don't... That was kind of short-ish. It's 6 p.m. Okay, we probably can't play the whole next segment, but we can start. So, let's make some progress on it. After I drink a bit of water. The best reasoning wasn't any help at all. Yes, Kay, and water is wet. <laughs> yeah, so true. All right, let's continue. <clears throat> 12.05pm. Autumn Palace. She said it would only be a 10 minute recess. They sure are taking an awfully long time. <laughs> Sorry to keep you waiting. Prosecutor the best presents Miss Delicia Scones. Yes, see? You called, so here I am. It is I, Delicia Scones, the pharmacist who makes delicious drugs. Mmm, <laughs> drugs. <laughs> but you can call me Miss Delicious. And you can call me Mr. The Bestest. <laughs> nah, I think I'll pass. Oi, nice to meet you, bestie. They've gone straight to nicknames. Huh? That boy? It reminds me of someone. <laughs> this is Miles Edgeworth. He's Gregory's son. Yesy, nice to meet you, Miley. Hmm. Could you please not call me Miley? <laughs> Meeting Greggy's boy. I guess it's a sign that I'm getting old. How old is this woman? She looks exactly the same as well. Not sure that line came off as scones the translators had hoped. Oh, which line? I think I uh, must have skinned over it. Oh, the delicious drugs part? Yeah, that was kind of a... Uh, yeah, very strange. <laughs> Sebastian, isn't there something you'd like to ask, Miss Pharmacist? Oh, right, yeah. Miss Delicious, could you tell us the reason why you came to the gallery? Yesy? I came to see the curator, Katie. I've been friends with her for 18 years, so I visit her quite often. Is it true, Miss Pharmacist, that you also assisted in the treatment of Mr. Gustavia? I guess you could say that, although I only made the antidote for the doctor. Wow! You made the antidote on the spot? Yes, see? As long as I have the right ingredients, I can make any drug easily. Hmm. The infirmary here is well equipped, you see. Instead of sending him to the hospital in critical condition, we treated him right away. I did all I could do. The rest depends upon his body's ability to recover. Do you know the victim, Miss Delicious? Yes, see. Although it's been 18 years since I last saw him, I only knew that he had become a world famous pastry chef. Oh, is the victim that famous? I heard on the news that he had won a competition for designing desserts. That reminds me, I do remember him mentioning something about studying design in Zengfa. Now, let's get down to business. Miss Pharmacist, are you familiar with the drug Megatoxin X? 
You see, it's the drug that's used to kill those things. It's mega effective. Because the effects are so potent, it's not available to the general public. What are those things you're referring to? It's a drug for vanquishing the creatures that strike fear into the heart of a lady. The ones that often infest kitchens and the like. Ah, I think I know what she's talking about. So, Miss Pharmacist, may I ask you one more thing? Do you know what happens when you mix normalium with fatalium? Yesy, I know. Yeah, there's a ton of animations and they uh, they have a lot of frames, don't they? It was the last Ace Attorney game on the DS, you believe. Ah, okay, was it after Apollo Justice? Interesting. That would explain something about that game, which I won't say now. I'll have to wait until we're playing that game. It's even written on the warning label for Megatoxin X. Hazardous when mixed. When the two drugs are mixed together, a chemical reaction occurs and a gas is released. Inhaling a large amount of this gas can cause breathing difficulties and even death. From the amount of poison gas Gusty breathed in, I think there was probably at least 500 milliliters of each chemical in the gas. As expected of a pharmacist. She's very well informed. Nemalium is an adhesive liquid that becomes hot as soon as heat is applied. It also has a red colour and a minty fragrance. Due to its low cost, it's used everywhere. Petalium is a white watery liquid. That's enough for now. As expected of a pharmacist, you're very knowledgeable. Yes, see, of course I am. Megatoxin X is one of the chemicals that the company I work for produces. Oh, okay. <laughs> well then. <laughs> uh, but not just anyone has access to it. It's so potent as a poison that it couldn't be sold to the public after all. Thank you. I think that's all I need to hear. Does Judge Courtney suspect her? What is she hiding behind that smile? Oh, Flatfoot, have you made progress in the investigation or something? Yeah, let me tell you. The glass cases that contain the sculptures can be opened by a mechanism in the lid. Hmm, what strange cases. The temperature in the cases can be lowered down to zero degrees Fahrenheit. The inside of the Pisces case was set to 27 degrees Fahrenheit, so my hand nearly got stuck to the ice. Good thing it didn't. So then, from the lid of the Pisces case, we detected slight traces of nemalium. Oh, not bad. Huh? If the nemalium was in a glass case at a temperature of 27 degrees Fahrenheit, then it would have been frozen to the lid. Oh, really? So what happened? Mr. DeBest. Why don't we try borrowing the power of Kay's little thief? I think the circumstances will be easier to understand if we use our Mr. Thief. Hmm, so you really want to help me out that much? Fine, I'm not really sure how this all works, but you, get on with it. I hate being bossed around by this guy, but to arrive at the truth, I'll do it. Stop acting as you please. The goddess of law has no need of your power. Don't be such a stick in the mud, Courtney Pie. We have approval of the prosecutor in charge, so what's the problem? Could it be there's something the PIC doesn't want us to find out? That's none of your concern. If you insist on participating in the investigation, then let me check if you're qualified by asking you a question. What is she planning? Who set off the poison gas? Hmm. I'll save. I don't know if I actually have to answer or if the characters are going to answer. Do, 
If you can answer me that, I will allow you to work with us. Well then, Miles. The person who opened the Pisces case and set off the gas. When you think about the circumstances, there's only one person it could have been. Yes. Considering the circumstances, it's clear who it was. So, please give me your answer. Who set off the poison gas? I think I think it was a trap set for the victim. Set for whoever uh, opened it. Maybe it was Larry! <laughs> the one who set off the gas is clearly this person. Clearly overruled. No! <laughs> As I suspected, you just aren't qualified. Please wait, Courtney Pie. He was just joking. If you think about it carefully, it's obvious who caused the poison gas. Only that person was in the room at that time. Right, Miles? Uh, um, that's right. So, I'll ask again. He was 54. There was no one in the Autumn Palace other than the victim, Dane Gustavia. It's hard to believe it could have been anyone but him. It seems that way. Very well. I'll allow you to participate this time. However, if I feel you are a hindrance, I will have to ask you to leave. Understood. But what I don't understand is why the victim opened that case. So, Mr. Edgeworth, what shall I recreate? Based on the information we've gathered so far, let's recreate the scene before the gas. Got it! Oh! Don't scare me like that! So, this is the true power of Sir Thief. Let's investigate the Pisces sculpture post haste. There's frozen normalium on the lid of the Pisces sculpture's glass case. It's frozen so thick you can't even open the lid. On the actual glass case, the lid was heavily cracked. It was like someone had it out for the Pisces sculpture, sir. Do you have any idea how it came to be cracked like this? Hmm. Well, the damage didn't seem to have come from outside of the glass case, sir. I see. So the inside of the case was below freezing point, and the case had developed cracks. There are no signs of external damage. From this we can deduce... Below freezing? Like Mr. Edgeworth's cold stare. <laughs> and cracked? Like Mr. Edgeworth's furrowed brow. <laughs> Thermal fracturing! <laughs> the cold glass case was heated from the outside, causing it to crack. Hmm, but why did thermal fracturing occur here, and what caused it? Hmm. Inside the thermally fractured glass case, there was frozen normalium. Oh, that face means you've probably thought of something, Miles. Indeed I have. I know how Mr. Gustavia was able to open the glass case. What? How can you possibly know something I don't? <laughs> The judge is the most shady character in this game so far. Yeah, I don't. I, I think she. I think she's bad. <laughs> I'd say the things he does know are in the minority. Hey, aren't you going to let me know? How did Dane Dis Gustavia open the glass case? He used my badge, obviously. <laughs> Mr. Gustavia used this to open the case. Huh? Oh, uh, Justine. Do not worry, Sebastian. I cannot understand it either. I'm certain that no one but Mr. Edgeworth is able to comprehend such logic. Oomph. It can't be this. The fractured case and the frozen normalium. 
The cause of the thermal fracturing must tie these two together. Hmm. If your explanation isn't the best, then don't bother giving it to me. The gas burner. This gas burner that was found in the Autumn Palace shows signs of recent use. I believe this was the cause of the thermal fracturing in the Pisces sculpture's glass case. A gas burner? Why would he use something like that? Ah, I got it. The lid was frozen shut, so he had to use the burner to melt the ice. Indeed, that is correct. Oh, I just had a late start. I I'm still the best, you know. <laughs> late start? You didn't even understand a single thing, did you? Well, that's just because Mr. Edgeworth's explanation was too hard to follow. Okay, why don't you update the little thief so that he can understand it? <laughs> That's kind of hard. <laughs> also, Larry is still here, just drawing stuff. If you say so. Right, let's restart the recreation. The victim, Dane Gustavia, was the only one to enter the Autumn Palace. If he used the gas burner then, the normalium in the glass case would have melted. Uh-huh, uh-huh, and then? The melted normalium would have come into contact with the fatalium inside the case. And produced the poison gas. The moment Mr. Gustavia opened the lid, he would have begun to inhale the gas. He managed to drag himself out to the fountain patio just before his strength ran out. So he inhaled the gas when he opened the lid. It seems he finally understands. But why did Mr. Gustavia open the glass case of the Pisces sculpture? The victim's goal. That I did not yet know. Perhaps he had the same reason as Uncle Ray. Maybe he actually came to see the Winter Palace, not the Autumn one. Uncle Ray also thought that this was the Winter Palace at first. Oi, you too, Ray Ray? Actually, I thought so too. It looks just like Icy's room from 18 years ago. It's even got the exact same plants in front of the door. It seems everyone involved with the IS-7 incident made the same mistake. It is imperative that we investigate the real Winter Palace immediately. I should suggest that to Mr. DeBest. I get it now! Yeah, that's how it was! Huh, did you think of something? The victim committed suicide! He thought he would look refined if he died in an art gallery. <laughs> oh. Have you even been listening? Well, if you're as smart as me, just hearing half the story will be enough. Sebastian, I'll explain it from the top later. Top? That means best, right? All right, I'll leave it to you. <laughs> oh. Most rocks know more than the best. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes, it would indeed be best to let Judge Courtney handle him. That aside, don't you have some information to inform everyone of? Oh, I totally forgot. What are you talking about? <laughs> we did a little checking on that pharmacist. We, meaning me, the best prosecutors, subordinate. That's not something to brag about. Sh shut up, you. Quiet down and listen. Suicide is, um, off the table for now, yeah. That's because, um, in short, that pharmacist is the culprit. She set up the, ga the gas as a trap. No! It's a terrible shame. 
Miss Pharmacist? How could one in the profession of saving lives stoop to extinguishing them? Huh? But what are you saying? I, I would never do such a thing. Mr. De Best, do you have a basis for these accusations? Huh, <laughs> of course. This is my basis. Her pharmacist's license. It would permit her to handle Megatoxin X, right? And its active ingredient, Fatalium, was one of the components of the poison gas. Exactly! That chemical is almost impossible for ordinary people to obtain. But that pharmacist is another story altogether. Uh, it wasn't me! You've got it all wrong! And that's not all! A bottle of Megatoxin X was found in the victim's pocket. Interesting. And on the bottle, we found clear fingerprints. Yours! Eep! Eep! You and the curator took the victim to the infirmary, right? That would have given you the perfect opportunity to plant the bottle on him. Th that's... You are the only pharmacist on the premises who could have handled Megatoxin X. Furthermore, as for the curator of this art gallery, you're an acquaintance of hers. You would have had access to the gallery at any time, in order to prepare the poison gas trap. But please wait! That Megatoxin X, it was stolen! Trying to lie your way out of this won't go well with me. It's true! Look, I've got the proof right here in my bag! What is she searching for? Not this. <laughs> the candy again. Hmm. <laughs> Not this either. Hmm? I remember seeing cloth like that recently. Ah, here. Please take a look at this. Hmm? It's some sort of paper. What's it say? April 1st. Theft report accepted. Stolen item. Megatoxin X. This is a theft report sec acceptance certificate. What? Yes, see, truth is, one week ago, my Megatoxin X was stolen. One week ago? That means you didn't have it with you today? Yes, see, that bottle you just found is probably the one that was stolen from me. I normally carry that bottle of Megatoxin X in my bag at all times. Even though I often forget to keep it locked up, I would never even think about mixing it with Normalium. But why in the world would you carry such a dangerous substance on your person? Well, you never know when those things will appear. Those... those... Those creatures that infest the kitchen, striking fear into the heart of a lady, right? Although, if you had a rolled up newspaper, you could just squash them with one blow. Justine, what do we do now? Well then, can we really accept this theft report? Let's ask for confirmation. That should clearly tell us whether or not she's lying. Right. Well then, I'll just call and confirm it. It looks like Miss Delicious isn't the culprit. Indeed. If she really did set up the poison gas as a trap, I don't believe she would do it in, a, in the way that incriminates her most. So Miles, who do you think is a culprit? Predicting the actions of the victim would require a fair amount of advanced planning. And there's only one person here capable of that. He's, he's so incompetent, it would be comical if it wasn't for the job he's supposed to do. Yes, exactly, I agree. <laughs> he's funny and cute, and then I remember that, you know, he's he throws people in jail. <laughs> huh? Uncle Ray would like to know too. Who do you suspect? I suspect my save file. The one who stole the Megatoxin X and prepared the room in advance was... 
You, Raymond Shields. It was this person. Probably. Uh, hmm, I see. Miles, you're feeling it. You're feeling tired, aren't you? Instead of an alarm clock, let me tell you a funny story from when you were small. During your second year of grade school, you were as tired as you are right now. Uh, I'm awake. Please don't say any more. Ah, I kind of wanted to hear the rest of that. <laughs> me too. Someone who could predict the victim's actions and prepare in advance. It can only be that person. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, am I going to need my health? Yeah, we'll be right. Catherine. It had to be the curator of the Zodiac Art Gallery, Miss Catherine Hall. However, I still don't have any evidence that she is the criminal yet. I see. She is... Hmm? The way he said that just now sounded like he had been expecting it. Hmm. Good job, Miles. As expected from Uncle Ray's future apprentice. I, I have no intention of becoming your apprentice. And I will now announce the results of my verification. I can confirm that her theft report was indeed accepted. Therefore, it's a little too early to come to a decision. Hmm. That means your logic was completely faulty. Oh, y you're wrong. My real performance is still to come. Really? And how do you plan to proceed with your investigation? Th that's... First, we need to speak with the curator. And after that... Oh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Sebastian. Mr. Gustavia may have had business in the Winter Palace. I believe we should send an investigator there as well. Oh, that's good too. Detective Gumshoe, investigate the Winter Palace at once. Oh, got it, sir. Justine, let's go talk to the curator. Yes, let us proceed. We should go and listen to what Miss Hall has to say as well. One thirty-five p.m. Fountain Picio. All right, I want you guys to listen to what the curator has to say. Mr. The Best, weren't you going to go and talk to her yourself? Nah, that's a job for my subordinates. All I have to do is wait for their report. I'm the best prosecutor, after all. <laughs> Such arrogance. Well, this is anticlimactic. I'm gonna chill for a bit. <laughs> huh? What's that in the fountain? Uh, ah! Uh oh. Oh! Whoa! Th th there's a dead body in the fountain! What is the meaning of this? Silence, everyone. Forensics. Identify this body at once. It's terrible, pal. Please be quiet, detective. The ice sculptures in the Winter Palace. They've all melted, pal. Oh, lucky we got a photo of them. Mm. What? 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 Well, <laughs> this case is pretty wild. What's going on here? There are two victims now. This is all... Just like 18 years ago. Once again, the ice sculptures have melted. Again? And everyone related to the incident 18 years ago is gathered here now. This is no mere coincidence. Don't you think so, Miles? Yes. The key to finding the truth of this case lies in the IS-7 incident. This is what I believe. <laughs> That's right. Uncle Ray thinks so too. Looks like it's time once again for Uncle Ray to tell you about the IS-7 incident. <laughs> I changed my badge! <laughs> now they're flipping me again. It's patio. Really? Huh. 
Well, that was a... Okay, I didn't expect that segment to be so short, but, uh, you know, that would be a good stopping point, actually. Yeah. My parents always called it Patio, because we had a Patio. Patio. Maybe... Maybe that's a uh, British pronunciation or something. Trying to get some major material gathering and building planning done in DQB2. Nice. Good luck, Tag. That was a quick chapter. And here you thought that was just how the how the Aussies say it. <laughs> well, it's how my family says it, but uh, I'm not sure where they got it from. Okay. Yeah, this is a pretty cool case. I like it. All right. Yeah, I think I'll end it there. Give my voice some time to rest, and uh, when we come back, play as Gregory. His last case. Well, are we actually going to play as Gregory? Or is he just telling us a story? Tell me a story. Maybe it's a South Australian thing. Maybe, yeah. Oh, we shall find out next time. Okay, we'll continue this next time. This is a really interesting case. Really looking forward to seeing where it goes. Um, who can I host? I'll send you over to Sakura Tsubasa. She's playing uh, Ocarina of Time Randomizer. Nice. Thank you all very much for watching. Slash raid Sakura. Subasa, and I will see you all next time. See ya!